Hey, welcome back to Brighter Rays. We're going through a study called Dear Titus, and today is the conclusion of this week's study. And uh, we've been working through one through four, and as we've gone through it, that leads us to the very end of four, which is the, the common salutation of Paul's letters, which is grace and peace. This one specifically says, grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. So that's how he greets him. You probably have heard other Christians greet each other with I, with the words grace and peace. That's a good thing to say. You know, because Titus here, using him as the example, had rece received grace and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Savior. That's what happened. If you know Jesus as your Savior, then you too have grace and peace. Grace that chose you to be numbered among God's elect. Grace that caused you to have faith. Grace that led you to the knowledge of the truth. Grace that allowed you to strive for a life of godliness. Grace that gives you hope of eternal life. So you have all that grace and much more. I barely scratch the surface with those things. And then you also have peace. Peace which was promised before the eternal times, like it says here. Peace that was preached to you through the word of God. And so even in the salutation, right? Even in this beginning part, when he says grace and peace, you can look up to what, what was just written and find that grace and peace right there. Peace, eternal life. You know, grace and peace to you. He's already said, hey, guess what? Eternal life. <laughs> he says, grace, you know, you are, you're God's elect. You're chosen. You, you've been given all these things and blessings of God. It's amazing. So grace and peace are not just little catchphrases. You know, you can look at what comes before and really what comes after in the letter too. And the good things that God describes in the letter you can see those and be like, wow, okay, that's what grace and peace means. He's giving, he's already given examples of what it is. So we need to apply that ourselves. We need to remind ourselves that we have grace and peace in God. Grace, I mean, how much grace have we been have we received? How many blessings from God have we really received? And we miss it. We're blind to those things, or we take them for granted, which we should never do. We can't do that. So. May God help us to remember those things, like Paul is trying to get Titus to remember. And we need to remember that we have peace, especially in the world that we live in. You know, people have gone through horrendous things over the centuries since Paul wrote this. Uh, even when Paul was writing it, you know, things are going to get pretty brutal underneath Nero and and the uh, some of the other emperors that were coming and. So they had a hard time, and then you get into uh, the time of the Reformation. You got people dying for their faith there too, and you know, just a, a brutal time. So, you know, grace and peace is a good thing for us to remember because we have received so much, received so much, and um, so just keep that in mind. You know, when you're when you're watching TV, <laughs> remember I have grace and peace. Remember that. You know, if you're watching the news, scrolling through the news feeds, you know, and you're seeing all these horrible things and lying and all the, the death and destruction and, and sadness and disparity out there. Just remember that you have grace and peace if you're a Christian. If you're not a Christian, then you don't really have grace and you don't really have peace either. And so you need to be a follower of Christ to get that. So, you know, how do you do that? You cry out to cry, cry out to him. To say, God, have mercy on me. I need you. I need your help. I cannot do this. I cannot do life alone. I am a sinner. And uh, I deserve your punishment. I do. If you actually believe that, and if you actually repent of your sin, you turn away from your sin, then, you know, follow him. Do what he tells you to do. But yeah, grace and peace are, are not just catchphrases. I mean, when we actually stop and think about grace and peace, we should just be blown away. Those are valuable treasures of Christ. So let me leave you there with this and uh, come back next time. We're going to continue our study in Titus. Moving on into the next part of the letter, we're going to be looking at um, the elders, right? That's at the very beginning. We're going to talk about who, are, who the elders should be, how they're qualified to be an elder, and kind of get into some of those details at the very beginning. We'll look at that. We'll have another week where we'll study some more about that. So a lot of good stuff in Titus. A lot of things we can spend a lot of time thinking about. Even though it's only three chapters, we can spend a long time 
thinking about the stuff and not just thinking about it, but we have to do it we have to put it into practice so uh, come back next week and we'll begin with those elders <laughs>